Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. <laughs> You a victim show yet? Still waiting. Smoke? Yeah. Here you are. May I have your attention, please? You people Thanks. out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. No sense of me sticking around I'll here. I'll number their name and yeah. What do you know? Chadwick? Do you have any uh -huh. questions or identifications? Uh, just in time, Mr. Chadwick. Sit down. This is Sergeant Asher. Hello, Hello Sergeant. Do you know? Phew. At the park in Cedar Avenue. Well, you could have used the jail line. If you forgot sure that card sure you gave me. Oh. Have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. Please be prompt with your questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, they are sent to the washroom and dressed back into their jail clothes. It makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. All right, boys, all the way to the end of the stage. Come on, all the way to the end, that's right. Now turn and face front, hands out of your pockets, down at your sides, and look straight ahead. That's the ticket. Now I'm going to ask each of you some questions. I want you to stand out, talk up so the people in the back of the room can hear you. It's a long way back there, so talk up. Number one, Folio Mahoney, narcotics. What is it, Foley? O'Mahony or O'Mahony? O'Mahony, Sergeant. Well, speak up. Come on. What's the address you gave? Uh, the search is in Kyton, South Africa. And that's my room, sir. That's my address. Where's the last place you slept? At the board my ship, sir. The Emerald Queen. She's at Pier 14. You're a merchant seaman, right? Uh, yes, sir. How long you been in town? Uh, two days, sir. Those are the clothes you were in when you were arrested? Oh, yes, sir. These are my shore clothes, sir. That's my best, my very best, sir. Stand up straight. Anyone arrested with you? Uh, yes, sir. A chap named uh, Megan, sir. Megan? That's number uh, 17. He an American? Uh, no, sir. Australian. How long you known him? Well, all my life, sir. We shipped together. What are you using now, Foley? Heroin? Cocaine? Morphine, what? Oh, sir, I, I'm not using anything, sir. All right. Number two, Edward Bible, Grand Theft Auto. Where do you live, Edward? Oh, me? Yes, you. I, I live with my sister-in-law. They can't they hear him, Sergeant. They can't hear you out there, Edward. You'll have to speak louder. Tell him where you live again. 1550 Lafayette, Lafayette Street. When the two officers signaled you to pull over to the side of the road... Why didn't you stop instead of making them chase you? Well, like I told the old boy upstairs, I, I didn't know they were, they were policemen. You didn't recognize their uniforms, prow cars? I, I have trouble with my eyes. They, they go back on me just, just like that sometimes. Yes, Edward. I ain't never been in no trouble, never. <laughs> Except once, once. Arrested on suspicious. That's all, just on suspicious. Suspicious, huh? That's right. What about your conviction? When? June 7, 1948, two years for burglary. Oh, hey, you know, Sergeant, I, I forgot all about that. All right. <laughs> Number three. I just John... borrowed that automobile from that man, Sergeant. When I know it was a mess on my doorbell and told all me All right, all right, that's enough, Edward. Slide down to the end of the line. Uh, yes, sir, just one of these folks you know, you know. Yes, all sir. All right. Number three, John Tynan, robbery. Where do you live, John? 4200 Larimer Street. What's that? The Silver Moon Motel. How long you live there? Three days. Where'd you live before? Topeka, Kansas. Keep your hands at your sides. How long you been in town? Got in last Sunday. Come by bus? Train, plane, or what? I drove in with a man from Kansas City. We shared expenses and split the driving. What's your work, John? Electrician. Were you carrying a weapon when the officers arrested you? Yeah, a revolver. What kind? 38. Blue steel? Plated what? Nickel plated. How long have you had it? Well, I bought it for the trip. I didn't know the man I was traveling with, and I thought I ought to have something to protect myself with. Where'd you buy it? From a man in Topeka. 
Okay, John. Number four, Carl Powers of Sokum. Face front and speak up, Carl. You live at 1601 Cherry Street? Yep. How long you lived there? Year. The report says you were breaking furniture at that address. They ganged up on me. Who? Mike and his wife. Mike? Who's Mike? Mike Bullock. Bull uh, some double-jointed name I never could say. Mike Bulaniski? He's here, too, you know. I know. Mike's got quite a shiner, Carl. So is his wife. So have I. Maybe all of you better lay off the hooch the next time you play cards. Any questions or identifications from the audience? How about it, Mr. Audience? Chadwick? Number three fits the general description you gave. Uh, Any questions three, or identifications no, no, from I, the audience, I just don't please. think so, Lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant? Nothing, Sergeant. Okay, run them off. Bring on the next line. And AWD Park Norris Building, Street 901. Hi, Crockett. Oh, good. <laughs> Number 16. Yeah. Isn't that the payoff? Yeah, who knows? You got anything yet? All right, let me know. Hi. Hi. You finished already? Yeah, not many today. Uh, Chadwick didn't come through, huh? No. Here, take a look at this. All these places? Yep. M.O.'s exactly the same. Pick out a little neighborhood jewelry store. She stays on the outside. He goes inside and cleans the place. They hit once and scramble to the next town. Well, ben, these descriptions are all pretty much alike, including the one we got from Chadwick. Hey, what about that? I thought sure Tynan was our boy. Well, let's keep hauling them in. Okay. Well, how'd you come out? Sixteen. How about you? <laughs> Thirty-three. I'll have to wait two more years for another exam. Unless thirty-two sergeants quit the force. <laughs> you, you get a chance. Oh, not much. I've never made more than 14 appointments in a two-year period. Ah, uh, that's the way it goes with civil service. Well, at least the waiting's over, huh? That's something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ha <laughs> ha, some game, huh? What do you mean, some game? Hoo-hoo, oh, storehead. <laughs> Guthrie. Yeah. Denver? Mm-hmm. Well, hold on. Matt, what about Tynan? Back at the city jail. Going to be arraigned on concealed weapons this afternoon. It's okay. Thanks, Ryan. Tannen may still be our boy, Matt. Chief of police in Denver wants us to hold. Jewelry store man there identified the picture we put on the wire last night. Get Chadwick up here. He's down looking through the mug file. <laughs> I've been away from my store all morning. It won't take too long, Mr. Chadwick. We just want to clarify a few matters. You want us to get the man and woman who held up your store, don't you? Well, yes, of course. Then why have you been wasting my time, your time, the department's time, Mr. Chadwick? What? Last Saturday morning, a man and woman stuck up your jewelry store. Happened approximately 11.30 in the morning, before you went to the bank. Now, just a minute, Lieutenant. Let me finish, and then you can talk. Besides a sizable amount of jewelry stock, you also reported that over $800 in cash was taken from your safe. As a matter of routine, our robbery division found out that you haven't deposited more than $400 in cash on any Saturday morning within the last eight months. But we gave you the benefit of the doubt. You seemed in good faith and anxious to cooperate with us. Matt, hand me that. Here you are, Ben. Thanks. This is a picture that went out over the wire last night. It's the man you saw in the lineup this morning. His name's John Tynan. A victim in Denver, Denver identified this picture of the man working with an unidentified woman who held up his store. We're pretty certain he's the same man who held you up. Well, what have you got to say? Well, I guess I've caused you an awful lot of trouble. Well, it isn't the first time a victim hasn't identified a thief because of the money he hoped to collect on his casualty policy. 
Well, Mr. Chadwick? Uh, yes. Yes, he's the man who held me up. Will I be booked or something? How much cash did he actually get? $360. How much did you claim? $800 plus. Give him a form, Matt, so we can verify this identification. Right. I don't understand people sometimes. They hoop and holler and cry for law and order and protection. When they have an opportunity to do something active in the way of apprehending criminals, they pass it up. Sign here, Mr. Chadwick. Yeah. And this copy, too. No, what? You better call your lawyer, Mr. Chadwick. Insurance companies don't like to be lied to either. Got it too, and there's a couple of retirements coming up next month. <clears throat> yeah. Congratulations, Pete. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Boy, I should have been sweating it out. <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Herb. What's that booking number again? Two two six eight nine. Hmm. Didn't we let him out for your lineup today? Uh huh. How's Molly? Uh, good. Hey, 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 Sergeant. Hey, hey, Sergeant. I got to see you in a minute. Just a minute. I got something to later, tell you. Later, Ed. Later. Hey, but it's important, Sergeant. Later, Ed. Oh, don't forget. Hey, don't forget. Hi, Carl. Well, Guthrie. How you been, Lieutenant? Fine, thanks. Yourself? Good. Hey, Lieutenant. Why don't you get him to put radios in these places? At least while the series is on. Yeah, <laughs> All right. All right. Knock it off, you guys. Knock it off. Some people want to get some sleep around here, you know. Tynan? Yeah? Come on. Now what? This way. There's no phone in here, Ben. No, we won't need one. Thanks, Ben. Sure. Sit down, John. Smoke? Sure. <sighs> Why the visit? You're identified, John. Denver police want you for the same thing we picked you up on here. Mr. Chadwick here in town's identified you, too. Matt, show him. Here. Look him over. Well, son? What's it mean? That depends on you. Ever been in trouble before? No. How old are you? Twenty-three. Well, with or without a statement, you'll be indicted for grand theft and robbery. They can also throw in transporting stolen property, carrying concealed weapons. It'll be easier if you cooperate with us. How long? Hmm? It's up to the judge of the Superior Court. But we'll be there to tell him how much you helped us or how much you didn't. Her name's Irene Oldham. You can pick her up at the Albany Hotel. She's registered under the name of Mrs. Dick McBride. Get a stenographer, man. This Saturday night, CBS Radio catches up with the wandering caravan of Vaughn Monroe. After a one-month vacation, Vaughn, the Moon Maids, the Moon Man, and singing comic Ziggy Talent will again make music in the Monroe Manor over most of these same stations. CBS Radio beams their season premiere out to you this Saturday night. Don't miss it. <laughs> Here, Hildy. You can use my desk. Smoke, John? Thanks. We'll get some facts first. Uh, you can take these, Hildy. Wait a minute. Did they pick up Irene yet? They're doing it now. Oh, I don't want to see her when they bring her in, Lieutenant. They'll have to see her when you're arraigned. But I don't want to see her now. Mm, okay. Well, let's go ahead. How long have you known Irene Oldham? 
I met her two months ago. Where? In my hometown, Topeka. Go on, John. We liked each other, Irene and me. And we decided to pull some jobs together. Now, was it her idea or your idea? Both of us, I guess. But she figured out a way to do it. The idea was to hit and run. So we took her car and went on the road. We'd go in a jewelry store and pretend like we were going to get married and wanted to pick out a ring. We'd wait until the store cleared if there were customers in there. Nobody suspected us. Even though Irene's almost 30, we both look the same age, I guess. Well, when we had our chance, I'd gun the storeman and Irene keep a lookout in front. That's the way we planned it all the time. We'd stay in different places each town. Where were you last Saturday morning at 11.30? I was with Irene at a jewelry store on Eastern Avenue in this city. Name the store. Um, the Elite Jewelry Company. We robbed it. I used a gun. A 32 revolver that I bought in Topeka, Kansas. My accomplice, accomplice in robbing, in this robbery, was Irene Oldham. She looked out the front while I stuck with the man inside. I took everything in the open cases in the store that looked valuable to me, and then I forced the man to open the safe. I remember it was $360 because the man had it already deposited in the bank. I went outside yeah. then and... Yeah, yeah. Uh, hold it, John. Well, checked out an hour ago. Just missed her. Hotel manager reported the big, nice-looking guy came and got her bag and baggage. Drove a cab, 51. Dorman thinks 62R first on the license numbers. Heard her call him Frank. Mm. Well, see what you can do at license registration, Quine, and get out an APB on him. They can't get too far. Right. All right. Go ahead, John. Well, I, I gave the money and the jewelry to Irene, like I'd been doing on all the jobs. Irene was saving it all for us. This was our last stop. We were going to get married and go to South America when we finished. <laughs> the moniker file on that Frank. Anything? Well, about 16 possibilities from the description being worked on. Prints in her room matched up. She's a hometown girl. Where'd she fall from? This county. First time, January 1941. Automobile theft. R&I came up with this. Her name's Irene Kingston, alias Irene King, Irene Kensington, Irene Bradley, Helen Diamond. Got a mother living here, Mrs. Edith Kingston. Mm. You get a make and one on this Irene yet? Mm-hmm. Ash is holding it for you downstairs. She's got a red flag since Mrs. Kingston? Yes? Police. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Greb. We'd like to talk to you. About Irene? Yes. Come in. Sit down. Just a minute. I'll turn this thing off. What is it this time? Irene's in town, Mrs. Kingston. Well, I haven't seen her. She hasn't contacted you at all? She hasn't contacted me since she was 16, Sergeant. You mean you haven't seen your daughter since she was 16, Mrs. Kingston? I mean... Yes, I've seen her. She's lived here with me at different times when she wasn't running around or in prison. Now, when was the last time you saw her? Three years ago. She hasn't contacted you in all this time? I said no before, Lieutenant. I can't help you. Yeah, maybe you can, Mrs. Kingston. Do you know any of Irene's friends here in town? I told you I haven't seen her for three years. Well, we mean some old friends she might have known when you were seeing her, when she lived here with you. I don't know any of them. They'd come here now and then. I I never wanted them in the apartment. Some I remember, some I don't, I guess. Well, this is our job, Mrs. Kingston. If it weren't us, it'd be somebody else. Your daughter's wanted for robbery and murder. 
We're trying to get a line on anyone she knew at all. Anyone she might see while she's in town. Any place she might stay. Uh, have you got the list, Ma? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's several names in her file downtown of people she associated with here. Maybe you know some of them or can tell us where we can locate them. I told you I can't help you. Well, let's try anyhow. A man named uh, Hal Ames? No. I don't even recognize that name. Louis Wenberg? No. William Doyle? Rosetta Mays? Paul Pratt? Rosetta Mays. Hmm? She went to high school with Irene. She died last year in childbirth. <clears throat> John Eby? Leonard Ipwich? You don't recognize any of those names, huh? No, no, no. I'm not good at names at all. Maybe if I saw their faces, I could tell you something about them. Mrs. Kingston, Irene came in town last weekend with a boy named John Tynan. We have him in custody already. She was staying at the Albany Hotel calling herself Mrs. Dick McBride. She checked out just before we got there. A man she called Frank picked her up. Do you know anybody she used to call Frank? No. Our description says he's a big man, over six feet, around 200 pounds or better. Dark hair. Uh... I... I can't help you a bit. I've never been able to help the police. I've never been able to help Irene. She got a taste of the gutter once, and she liked it. And that's that. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? Well, thanks, Mrs. Kingston. Come on, then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, let's get some men on this place 24 hours a day. we'd get something. We will. We had that APB out on her and that Frank less than an hour after they started. We got all the roads covered, airports, bus stations, harbors. And don't forget her mother's apartment. Don't forget that. Yeah. I hate to keep so many men tied up. Hey there. Hi, Matt. Ben, how are you? Fine, Joe. 13J in? Yeah, you want it? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, sign here. All right. Okay. Parked about halfway down the line. I see you. Thanks, Joe. See you, Joe. Yeah. You know, this baby could stand a paint job. <laughs> you say. Yeah, hold it, man. Joe's waiting. What do you want, Joe? Oh, Quine's on the phone, Ben. I thought it'd save time instead of a 1041. Right. Guthrie. Hmm? When? Okay. Thanks, Joe. Sure, Ben. Klein's picked up Frank out at the airport. Let's go, man. Any trouble, Klein? No, like a lamb. Bought two tickets for the 5 o'clock plane. He used the name Mr. and Mrs. Frank Peterson. That was on his license, too, Frank Peterson. Bring any luggage? Checked it through already. What did he say? Not a word. Asher's got him in here. Hiya, Matt. Ben? Hi. Hi. Are you Frank Peterson? Well, let me tell you. You are Frank Peterson. You've already bought two tickets and checked your luggage. You're going to meet Irene Kingston here. Now, look, we'd rather pick her up where she's staying. Someone might get hurt around here. Where is she, Frank? Where's Irene Kingston? All right, take him down and book him. Anything, 
huh? No, nothing. Asher and Quine are covering the main entrance. Murphy and Carger, the parking lot. Hughes at the cab stand, and Blaker went over to the other terminal just in case she might have made a mistake. Oh. Uh, uh, ten minutes to five. Something should happen pretty soon. If it's going to happen. You know, she might have been counting on a call from Frank or something. She ran out on Tynan when he didn't call. Yeah, it's a chance. Some gal, huh? Yeah. Out front. Yeah. Uh, she came in on a cab. I tagged her right after she pulled up, but she had a gun. You all right? Ah, uh, my leg. I was lucky. She kicked off her shoes and ran for the field. Asher took out after her. That way? Yeah. Hey, you. You there. Call an ambulance. Come on, man. Right. Through the parking lot, Ben. Right. There's Asher. Yeah, he got her. I can't figure why she was running for that field. You still alive? Uh-huh. How's Quine? Nick, you okay? Yeah. I'll get an ambulance out here. Yeah. five o'clock. That must be their plane. Wonder where they were going. South America. The lineup, where before you pass the innocent the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb. Sergeant Matt Greb, I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, can I ask a question for identification? The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb, was written by E. Jack Newman with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Peter Leeds, High Averback, Herb Butterfield, Howard McNear, Gil Stratton Jr., Ray Hartman, and Jeanette Nolan. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This Saturday, Joan Crawford stars in I Knew This Woman, a poignant drama of family life when stars over Hollywood launches its 11th big season of dramatic hits on CBS radio. Stars over Hollywood is heard every Saturday in the daytime hours on most of these same CBS radio stations. Dan Coverly speaking, and remember, it's two hours of music, the nation's favorite songs, every Friday evening on the CBS Radio Network. Thank you.